Good morning. So today we're going to talk about the clone stamp tool in Photoshop. First thing we're going to do is we need to understand why we're going to use the clone stamp tool. And then once we learn that, we're going to learn how to use the clone stamp tool. So every once in a while in a photo, you're going to get some things that you don't want. And they could be anything from clone stamp tools used a ton in uh, fashion magazines, any kind of blemish, any kind of acne, a pimple. You can quickly get rid of the clone with the the pimple with the clone stamp tool, but sometimes there's bigger and larger issues here, and sometimes you want to get rid of those issues. So let's go ahead and take a look at this picture here. It's a beautiful picture, but there's one issue, right? So what is that issue? It's these uh, pesky kids here. So let's go ahead and get rid of these kids in this scene. Let's have a nice, beautiful scene with this beautiful couple, and let's get rid of these uh, this little nuisance here. So let's go ahead now and take a look at where the, clamps, the clone stamp tool is. If you look in our menu here, we're going to go down and our menu is actually broken up into segments. So we have our selection slash move tools, we have our um, crop tool slash um, like brush tools, and then down here we get to our shape tools which are kind of our um, our vector tools and then we kind of go down and you can see that as we go down there's kind of a pattern of the way that the tools are set up. We're going to go ahead and go to the clone stamp tool. Now if we uh, right click on this or if we hold it down for a second we have two tools in here. We have the clone stamp tool and the pattern stamp tool and we definitely want the clone stamp tool. The pattern stamp I've used every once in a while but not too often. Clone stamp tool I can tell you I've used a lot so let's go ahead and use that. And let's take a look and see what does a clone stamp tool do? It's really a brush. So if I hover over, hopefully you can see the circle on my screen here. And that might be better. Just like any brush, next to P on your keyboard, you have left bracket and right bracket. So we can make it bigger. We can make it smaller. We can also go, so if you can follow my mouse here, go to the top here, we can change what kind of brush that we're looking for, or what kind of brush we want to use. We can use a hard brush. That means we have hard edges on there and you can see the hardness is turned up to 100%. And we can use a soft brush, which the hardness is turned down to 0%. And we can also adjust the size of your brush here, which is exactly the same as right bracket and left bracket. Okay, that being said, I definitely highly recommend that you guys use a soft brush when using any kind of clone stamp tool. And I'll show you why. So let's go ahead and see if we can get rid of something on here before we get rid of the biggest uh, problem on the entire screen. So right here we have in the sand, we have this little stick. Not too much of a problem, but let's just say we want to get rid of it. We want a nice um, uh, solid beach here. So to get rid of it, we're going to go ahead and make our brush size just a little bigger than that stick there. So you don't want it to be the same size, but you don't want it to be too big as well. So you can see how it's just a bit bigger here. And we're going to go ahead and think about what we want to paint over it. So the clone stamp tool is essentially a painting brush tool. Instead of paint, we're going to paint other parts of the image on the clone, or on the um, part that we don't want. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're going to look for a part of the image, and I highly recommend that you would choose something that's very close to it. It needs to be something that's close in color as well. Let me zoom in here. So just around the stick here, we have, and this beach is pretty solid. And just so you know, I chose an image that would be easier to clone stamp. Things like beaches and skies and uh, water, things that have um, a very similar surrounding. So you can see that all the sand is pretty much the same. It's going to be so much easier to clone stamp. Same thing with water, same thing with skies. Um, let's go ahead and we're going to find an area that's pretty much the same in there's, you know what, in this image, there's a lot of area that's the same. I don't want to choose this because that's a different color. So let's go ahead and choose somewhere around here. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically take a picture of the area that we want and we're essentially selecting that area. And to do that, we're going to hold on our keyboard, make sure you have the Alt key pressed down. So once you have the Alt key pressed down, you can see that we have a target here. And so we're choosing our target location. So as I go around, it's going to be about right here. So I click, and there we go. I now have my target location. So as I scroll down, you can see that 
my paintbrush is now loaded with this color. Not only is it loaded with this color, but it's loaded with this image. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting. If you see my crosshairs, that's the area that it's painting. Now what's going to happen if I move too low, you're going to see that stick reappear. That's because that's the area where the stick was. So I'm kind of moving the stick into a new location. I'm going to command alt Z back really quick. And let me just show you something else. So just to show you that we're painting an image into another spot, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this foot here. So I'm going to hold alt, grab this kid's foot here, and you can see that I can paint another foot in this area here. I can go ahead and once again hold alt, let me grab this here, and I can paint that foot on her foot. And so you can see how it's essentially a painting tool, right? So we're painting one part of an image to another image. Let me command alt C back. And so I could pay, I could take out a lot of this stuff. So I could hold alt, select up here. Oops, a little too close. Try this again. Smaller brush. So I'm going to hold alt, grab this piece, paint that out. Paint a few things out. You can see it's working pretty well. Okay, so how would I get rid of this here? I'm going to go ahead and get a bigger brush and I'm going to select a part of the image here by holding alt, click, and you're going to see that this part of your image is pretty much gone. And I'm glad this happened here. So you can see that sometimes if you get a little too close to the image, um, we're going to have that problem where the image starts to repeat itself. So I'm just going to get a little part over like this. There we go. That's much better. And because it's an ocean, it just blends so well together. So you're going to end up painting all of this out. Just be careful not to have too many parts that are distinguished, like this little piece here. If you paint this piece in too many places, um, you're definitely going to notice that this is a clone stamp um, object or a clone stamp picture. So you don't want to do that. Things like this beach here, you're going to have to be careful with. So I'm going to grab this part of the uh, this, the uh, the ocean there, and you're going to see how it can work pretty well. Now I do have a repeating image here, but that's not a problem. I'm just going to grab a little piece here, just to kind of get rid of one of them, and so that way I don't have it repeating too much. That looks pretty good. And so on. And so once you're done, you're going to have a final image of little sister. I'll go ahead and move out. Little sister who's all by herself. So that's it. If you want, you can go ahead and just take the little brother out if you want. Um, also, you can take both little sister and little brother out if you want to go ahead and do something a little more advanced. Either one's fine, as long as I get at least one of these people out. And now I have a beautiful image of this couple and their single daughter. Okay, um, I'm going to have other videos up posted very soon, so that way you can get done with the rest of them. Good luck.